Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video it's going to be a review video and it's going to be Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This is my June book for the 12 books of, for 12 months challenge. I'm a bit late but you know you by now perhaps you get used, used to it used to it because you know that's me uh, i have to apologize today i didn't put put any makeup on because i'm with the dermatitis so i'm in treatment so it's not really advisable for me to put makeup on right now so i'm a bit pale as i am I didn't put any blush or anything to give more color to my face so if you think that I'm sick or something no that's just my face and my natural color so yeah I'm I'm sorry if I'm not so appealing today but um, if I didn't film I you know I would get even more late than I am so I have to film Okay, so I read Les Miserables. Um, I started reading in English, but and I read till like perhaps seventy-eight percent in English, uh, and then I bought because I didn't have a physical copy of the book. Uh, with me, but m more recently, like I don't know, a few maybe one month ago or something, one to two months ago, I bought um, these two volumes in Portuguese, and so I migrated to the second volume, that's where I was in my reading. And so I finished the book in Portuguese, but well, to the point. This book has already, I suppose, many reviews by now, and it's one of the great classics from French literature. literature. And some say, of some videos that I watched, some say that this book that doesn't have um, a principal character or a main character it's more like a shared protagonism but I would say in my opinion that <laughs> I suppose this is supported or it's the opinion of many other people uh, but in my opinion or in my perspective of my reading experience I think that Jean Valjean is the main character or is the character that drives the story and of course it became my favorite favorite character and well what this book talks about so the main plot it's remember this is my perspective so I'm going to tell you as I've absorbed the story and the main point that I think are most important. So this story begins with the story of a bishop and it's really funny because um, of some... there was one video that I, that I watched from another booktuber, a Brazilian booktuber actually, and she was with her husband uh, reading comments, negative comments about the her favorite classics and one of them was Les Miserables and some people said in the comments that the book has too many pages and too many stalling plot stories and some say that they didn't like the beginning of the book because it's so boring the story about this bishop and so on and so forth and I have to say that I agree with the booktuber that I, that I was watching the video from that is Paloma Lima 
if you are curious. Um, <laughs> she said that it was her favorite character. Uh, so, and you know, I, although it's not my favorite, it's up there. So it's my second one because uh, as we get into the story, we understand why Vitor Hugo gave us the background of this character. But well, so Jean Valjean is a man that is arrested because he stole bread and he's put in prison because of it. And he stole bread to give his, I think, brother or nephew. Now I don't remember. I'm not so sure about it, but you know, some member of his family because they were hungry, because they were poor. He, he was in a family that was very poor. And that will be the last time that he saw any member of his family. And so he, his sentence is uh, augmented because he tries to flee from prison and there is a point that he really so he stays there i think for from for 19 years so that's a long time for someone who stole bread he gets out but the stigma of be, having have been having been in prison never really goes away so when he tries to go to pubs to eat something or to Staying, um, uh, rent a room to sleep. Uh, people don't want to get in business with him. Um, and you have to remember that this story doesn't pass during the French Revolution. It passes after that. So this goes from 1812 to 1832. And we what we pass here through a student uh, march so but that's by the end of the book uh, and so when he gets out he gets out and as i was saying he tries to eat something in a pub or um, a residence and try tries to sleep somewhere People don't want to deal with him and he passes through uh, the, the house of this bishop and this bishop opens his door to him and gives him a place to sleep and something to eat. He sees when they are at the table dinner or at the dinner table, he sees that the, um, the cutlery is silver so at night when everyone is sleeping he goes there and steals the cutlery and goes away but he is caught and he is brought to the house of the bishop by the police because he was saying that the bishop had given him the cutlery and the bishop confirms that and goes even and brings up Two, two candlesticks and says oh you forgot this and gives it to him so that's the turning point for Jean Valjean when he sees the kindness and the um, benevolence of this bishop he like he makes a promise to himself to never steal again and never to live his, his life righteous and uh, honestly. Uh, so there's some things happen, but he grows to become an important man. So he goes to a town and he changes his name and he becomes a um, businessman a really big and wealthy businessman. You have to read to find out how he does that. Well, 
the how it's not really given to us but it's explained so um you have to read to find out and so he even becomes mayor of the of the town and some particularity about Jean Valjean is that or a curiosity perhaps is that he never uh, gets rid of that those candlesticks that the bishop gave him it's like a precious thing to him so some things go back and forth in time and there's a, a, a plot story about a woman that works for Jean Valjean in a factory for Jean Valjean of of Jean Valjean and she's you know she's poor she's working class and she has a daughter but she's not married and her, her daughter is take, being taken care of by a family in another city and she has to send money for them so they you know take care of her daughter and this woman it's called Fantine and the child the daughter the girl is called Cosette and by gossip in the factory about Fantine that she's not married and she has a child so she's impure and other stuff like that she ends up to be fired not by Jean Valjean but, but by the responsible of that sector um, and she you know she goes through a bad spot and goes through very difficulties she goes to prostitution because she has to pay in some way you know what i mean the room where she is and uh, to pay the family that is taking care of her daughter so later in the story jean valjean gets to know about this woman and her story and is very um is he feels for her and he tries everything to help her after the the moment he knows about her situation and especially because she was working for him so he felt he had a responsibility about uh, from, uh, about her um, and so he does everything to help her he and he tries to get her daughter back to get them reunited I'm not going to tell you if he achieves that um, but there's a point in time in the story where there there comes um, inspector of the police called Javert and he becomes the arch enemy of Jean Valjean because he knows that there is um, because he fled from the prison right so he's i i i don't think i told you that but if 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 he fled so he's um wanted man javert knows about this the story of this man that fled from the prison and he has his suspicion his suspicions about this mayor in this town because some one characteristic about Jean Valjean is that he's very, very, very strong. And he even saves the, the life of a man that was caught up under, under a wagon. Javert is there to witness that and he becomes suspicious. Like where this man ca came from, where his wealth came from. So who what is his background and so that's when uh, Jean Valjean begins his when he is uh, approached by Javert and he uh, understands that he's being watched it begins his uh, running time his run from this man this Javert and he's he will not be alone in this 
uh, going to from place to place in hiding is not going to be alone you have to read to know who is going to accompany him and later on we get to know other characters that will be uh, related to uh, the life of Jean Valjean one of the characters is the family Ternardier Ternardier I am sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly but Ternardier is a family who was getting um, who was taking care of Cosette and they are not good people they are op opportunists um, and they are bandits basically thieves and liars and everything bad you can imagine they do and they say and they you know and Ternardier and Jean Valjean will this encounter and encounter again in some situations and one vital situation Ternardier will not recognize uh, who is looking at but he will save Jean Valjean from a terrible situation like in a in an almost a random turn of events <laughs> and this encounter and this encounter between characters is going to be vital in the plot of the story so the end of the story well by the end or almost at, at the end of the story we have Jean Valjean saving someone and going through hell to save this person that he didn't even like but he was doing that because he loved someone else and Jean Valjean is a man that well, you get to understand that he, he, do, he doesn't have carnal interest to anyone or for anyone. He's like um, a man who loves his family, but he doesn't look for a partner, you know? But he cares deeply for people and he's... Um, after that point in time when the bishop does the thing that I told you he turns very magnanimous and very um, friend of the of people in every way that he can and so when he becomes wealth wealthy he gives back so he's a, he is a very kind man and he he cares about people and their well-being and because he was poor so he knows what is that life so he understands poor people and what they have to go through and he he cares deeply for people and he, get, he even gets to a point where he has the opportunity to maybe get rid of Javert and be safe and be and be rested but he doesn't take the step to do that so he's a very because he feels guilt from what he did and because he was in prison he feel he, he's very guilty very guilty not guilty he feels uh, guilt and he has a ship on each on his shoulder from wherever he goes although he's fleeing the police he knows or he in his understanding he thinks that he deserved to be in prison and that his place is in prison so he's a very taciturn and melancholic man so this is um as you can see uh, this is a, a story of a hero, of the formation of a hero. 
but along the way we get to know more about Fantine, more about Cosette, more about the Thénardier. There is Mario as well, that's a student that you have to read to find out where he get, fits in in here. So, something that I didn't enjoy about this book, and I suppose it's, it's a critic that many people do about this book, is the digre digressions that Vitor Hugo does between the, the plot and the story. So, he will uh, have here a um, digression about Waterloo, the War of Waterloo, or the Battle of Waterloo, and it's not like you will have a history lesson, because everything that he tells you is mostly made up, so it's really boring, I have to be honest, some pages I just look through if there was something useful and juicy. If not, I will pass the page because it was boring to death. At least to me, it was horrible. But there was other times, like when he was talking about the sewers, that although it's about the sewers, <laughs> It was very interesting. So, although he stopped the story to tell the story of per Parisian sewers, I thought it was very interesting because it was it was giving more context about what was going on, uh, the situation that Jean Valjean was in, and it was interesting to know those type of details. So, you know, you have some things are more interesting than others, but the I have to admit that uh, the stops that Vitor Hugo um, did in his story sometimes would get me out of the story because I was so invested in what was happening that that digression sometimes was like, oh, come on, let me get to Jean Valjean again. So, um, but you know, that's part of the charm of the book, we can say. Um, and something that I want to share with you, and I didn't have the opportunity to get a copy for myself, and even in ebook, I, I, I didn't bought yet, but um, there's a book called the Temptation of the Impossible, Vitor Hugo and Les Miserables, by Mario Vargas Llosa. And this book is, uh, as my understanding, is a compilation of essays, of lectures that Mario Vargas Lo Lo Llosa uh, gave in the Oxford University about this book. Um, and I'm very interested to read and see the comments and uh, reflections about uh, the, uh, from this author about the Luz Miserable. But I didn't have the opportunity. I'm eyeing on it. So in the maybe near future, I'm hoping for. But you know, I also have to save money so I can't buy books every time that I'm feeling it. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out when I can manage to buy this book and when I do so, I will do a separate video and I, put, and I will put this in a playlist so it's more easy for you to find and link the two videos uh, because I think it's very inter interesting as this book is a classic and I think it's a very round story and with many coincidences. So this book is full of coincidences that you may find a bit unlikely to happen in reality, but you know, it's a fictional book. So uh, some say that Tolstoy inspired himself in Luz Miserable to write War and Peace. 
and I'm very curious about that so when I read a War and Peace I will let you know my opinion <laughs> uh, but yeah I will put uh, uh, maybe I already put the cover of the book that I'm talking about for you to see I'm going to leave the title down below so it's more easy for you to research and I have to say I enjoyed the story in my Goodreads I think I gave this story four stars, but it's like four and three quarters. I'm not going to give the full five stars because of the fillers that this book have. That I think it's it's too much, you know. Uh, but the story it's really worth it, and you can do as I did. So in the parts that are not interesting to you and not about the plot in itself you can read through it like fast see more or less if there's something to catch on and if not pass the page so maybe some of you will not concur with me and think that I didn't give this book um, a real read but in my opinion I didn't lose anything about the story and because the parts that I get past will, wouldn't, wouldn't add on anything to the story or anything to my interest. So there is that. So yeah, please go read Les Miserables, it's really worth it. Jean Valjean is my favorite character, please let me know if you have read it, which character was your favorite. I saw, I watched two movies about Les Miserables, one with, how is it called? Let me see here. Okay, one from 1998 and I think is a um, more traditional movie and then a musical from 2012. So I watched the two of them years ago not recently i didn't rewatch it because i wasn't feel feeling like it the book was enough uh, but you know they have differences in some aspects and some scenes that happens so they are not so faithful to the story of the book but um, they are great so you have their two opportunities to watch the, the story being portrayed so I think it's really great you know what can I say the story is really fantastic and the journey of Jean Valjean is really worth it for for you to read and find out about so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already press the ring bell button so you can um, see all my notifications uh, leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!